Can a man lose his salvation? Well, let's take our Bibles out and really study what does the Bible say. Because really, the authority on the subject is not my opinion or your opinion. The authority on the subject is the Bible. And the way to study the Bible is in context, passage of Scripture, look and see what it says, and, and just then take what he says as truth instead of cherry-picking, which so many people do and will do in comments on this video. And you can have a good time reading all those comments. But if you'll take your Bible out and follow with me, you look at 1 John, not the Gospel of John, 1 John chapter 1. We're going to jump in at verse 5 and discuss this matter of can a man lose his salvation and then what does these passages mean? So let's take a look right now. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, he says, This is the message that we have heard from him and declare unto you. Let me say this. John is the writer. He's inspired of God to write the word. He's saying, this is the message we have heard from him, meaning he and the other disciples that followed Jesus around for three and a half years. Earlier in this chapter, if you read it, he's speaking about his um, position, his perspective as a eyewitness of Jesus Christ. We've seen him, we've heard him, we've handled him. So they know Jesus personally. They've talked clearly with Jesus Christ. So I think John has a pretty good grasp on what is right and what is wrong and what is true and what's not true. And in here, he begins to tell us what is true. And so, so he says, and this is the message which we have heard from him, and we declare to you, listen, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And so what he's saying is, God is light, and when he says God is light, it doesn't, it doesn't mean uh, anything other than God is perfectly pure in every way. God is holy, God is righteous, God is light. And in him is no darkness at all, meaning when he says darkness, he's talking about in him is no impurities, any ungodliness, any, any um, soul, any, any um, unrighteousness. God is light, perfectly pure. And in him is no darkness at all. In other words, God and sin don't get along. God will not fellowship with sin. God will not travel with sin. God will not participate in sin. God will not think on sin without thinking about putting it out. And so God is light and in him is no darkness. And it says at all. In him is no darkness at all. Meaning there is zero sin in God. He doesn't fellowship with sin. He doesn't walk with sin. He has no, no, nothing to do with sin. So keep that in your mind because this is very important. That's the reason we need a Savior. That's the reason Jesus came and died for us, to wash our sins away. And then, But what happens after we get saved and we sin again? What happens? And so he goes on and he says, if we say that we have fellowship with him, if we say we have fellowship with God, God who has no sin, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. He's saying, so God is light and in him is no darkness at all, meaning no sin. And we say that we have fellowship with him while we're walking in sin, we're liars. That's what he's saying. So you can have no fellowship with God when you have sin in your life. Well, that's enough to kick us all on our heels. Some people believe you can lose your salvation. My question to you is, uh, how? How do you lose your salvation? Is it a certain sin? Uh, at what point? Is it an accumulation of sin? No, you cannot lose your salvation. But what you can lose is your fellowship. When Jesus Christ saved our soul, Jesus went to the cross. He died there taking the penalty for our sin so now he hangs on the cross, and he, after he finishes dying, right before he dies, he said, It is finished! And he gave up the Spirit, and he went on back to be with God. The point is, Jesus done the full sacrifice to wash all of our sins away, past, present, and future sins washed away. So we never will be punished for our sin. Jesus was punished for our sin. Now, I know some of you are saying, oh my goodness, that's so wrong. Just follow with me and, and don't come with preconceived ideas, but look at your Bible and see what he says. What he's saying here is we as Christians, he's talking to Christians, we as Christians cannot continue to walk in sin while we're walking in fellowship with God. And when we choose to sin, we stepped out of fellowship with God. It doesn't mean we lost our salvation. See, salvation is a relationship. You're born into it. It's called being born again. References John chapter 3, 1 through 6, when Jesus spoke with Nicodemus and said, you must be born again. 
So when you're born again, you're born into the family of God. You can't be unborn. When you're born again, you're born uh, as a family member. The relationship is there forever. This relationship that we have with God cannot be annihilated, but the fellowship can. If sinning kicks us out of the family, then we ain't got a prayer. We ain't got a chance. There is no hope. And some people say, oh yeah, you can lose your salvation. Well, the question is when and how and are you saved? When somebody says they can lose their salvation, I'm asking them, how, how pure are you living? Because here he says, there, God is light and in him is no darkness. How much? At all. No darkness. Not a little bit, not a little bit. No darkness at all. And so if you sin at all, According to your theology, if you believe you're going to lose your salvation, that's when you lose it, the moment you sin. So the question is, how often do you have to get saved a day? <laughs> how often do you have to get saved every day? And what happens if you don't have all your sins confessed right before you die? Will you go to hell? Come on, y'all. Salvation is eternal life. Jesus said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever what believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't say whosoever believes in him and never sins again. He said whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So grace is this gift that is given to us. It is a gift of God that we receive by faith, not by works. But once we're saved, grace calls us to work, not to keep our salvation, but to enjoy the fellowship with Jesus Christ. Now look at the passage again and look at it closely. He says, this is the message we heard from him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. You know what he's saying? He's saying, when you sin... You are at that moment. I don't care what the sin is. I don't care if it's what you'd call a little white lie. They're all black lies, really. But no matter what, how little the sin, when you sin, you just stepped out of fellowship with God. You are not walking in fellowship with God when you sin. So you do something wrong. You offend somebody. You're in an argument with somebody, and you say something harsh. You can't turn right around and pray. You can't turn right around and talk to God. You can't listen to hear God, except for all you will hear is, what were you thinking? God's going to be dealing with, if you're truly a Christian, you need to repent. That was wrong. And then we go talking to God about something. He's saying, I ain't listening to you. I don't want to hear you until you come back and repent of your sin. So you see, that is the issue. The issue is not, can you lose your salvation? Listen close. The issue is, can you lose your fellowship with God? You can. Yes, you can lose your fellowship. You cannot lose your salvation. Why? Because your salvation never was dependent upon your good works or you'd go to hell just like I would. Your salvation is dependent on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again. Then he said, whosoever will, let him come. Then it says in the Bible, for by grace you're saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, I will go on to say that the Bible teaches us, that grace teaches us that we should live godly and soberly. That's what grace teaches us in the book of Titus that speaks of that. But not that we may keep our salvation, but that we may keep our fellowship. God, Jesus says, follow me, follow me. Well, following him means we walk out of darkness and into his light. And it's not a one-time experience back in the day, but it is an everyday experience. We are following him closely. We got saved one time back in the day. And if you ever got saved, you ain't going to be lost. But the problem is there's so many people out there say they're saved and they never got saved in the first place, but they're real good at religion. You know, they, they, they're like the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were very righteous in their own right. But they didn't have the righteousness of God and their righteousness would never measure up and they'll never make it to heaven. But when your righteousness depends on the grace of Jesus Christ, then you've got something. You've got the eternal life because his, his grace and his righteousness is eternal. On the cross, Jesus took our sin and when we stand before God, he gives us his righteousness. The way we get to heaven is not because we live so good. God said, boy, we ought to bring that one to heaven. He'll improve this place. No, 
When we give our life to Jesus Christ, we turn to Him and we cast our, our faith upon Him to save our soul. And if He don't save us, we're destined for hell. That's a fact. Now watch this now. This is important. Don't miss this, because if you miss this, you miss one of the most beautiful passages. Verse 7, he says, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, you know, he's saying, if we walk holy before God, as God is holy before us, he says, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. So if we're living for Jesus Christ, the great reward of living for Jesus Christ is that we have fellowship with him. We, we have fellowship with Jesus Christ. And, and that is, it is not something off in the distance. It's the immediate right now. And when you're walking with God, you can sense that he's speaking to you. You can sense that he's directing you. You can see how he guides your steps in life. I've watched it over the past bunch of years, and God has blessed my life. And there's been times I, I sin, and when I do, all that fellowship is broken. I didn't lose my salvation. I didn't lose my relationship. I just lost my fellowship, and it don't last long for me because it tears me up. When I get outside the borders, I have to come back and say, my God, I have sinned against you. And you know what he says about that? He says this, verse 7, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Listen, and you underline this now in your Bible. He says, And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You know what he's saying? He's saying, of course, after you're saved, You've got to continue to, to depend on the blood of Jesus Christ to keep you saved. We're talking about not relationship. Rather, we're talking about fellowship. The relationship, that's the born-again experience. The fellowship, that's the walk with God, walking in the Spirit, abiding in Jesus Christ. But when we don't abide in Him and we play in the world and we do the ungodly thing, think the ungodly thoughts, we immediately are walking in darkness and we are no longer walking in the light. The conviction of God comes upon us and he whips us. He, he tells us, this is wrong. You've gone the wrong way. Turn around and repent. And when we turn around and repent, he forgives us for the offense against the fellowship, not the relationship. He forgives us for the offense of the fellowship, husband and wife, maybe getting along just wonderful, loving each other, abiding with each other, having a wonderful time together, and just enjoying the, the blessings of marriage. And then one of them starts fussing at the other and causes a, an offense in the fellowship of the marriage. You hear what I'm saying? You didn't lose your marriage. You lost your fellowship. There's a whole lot of marriages that can listen to this right now <laughs> and realize you know, it's not worth the offense. Husband and wives, you ought to be friends. And you ought to fellowship with one another. And when one of you cross the other, you need to be quick to forgive. Or if you're the one that done the crossing, you ought to be quick to ask for forgiveness. But now we're talking about Jesus and we're talking about salvation. We're talking about the relationship one to us by birth. And then we're talking about the fellowship that is held together by us following him faithfully. And whenever we step outside the lines... The blood of Jesus Christ keeps us saved. If the blood of Jesus Christ can't keep us saved, you think your good works are going to keep you saved? No, sir. And let me tell you another thing. When we get saved, it is eternal salvation. Jesus said, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that, listen, whosoever believes in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. When does he give us the everlasting life? He gives it to us right when we accept Him as our Lord and Savior. And when we accept Him as our Lord and Savior, it's a point of time for us, but it's a point of eternity for Him. And we He saves us forever at that moment because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ activated by our faith in Him. That's how you're saved. And so now He goes on and He says this. Verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. We're lying to ourselves. And the truth is not in us. So I'm a Christian, but I can't say I have no sin. Jesus knows I have to come to him regular asking for forgiveness because I'm not perfect. But here's what happens. When you ask him, he forgives you and he, he restores the friendship. He restores the fellowship. But you don't have to get saved again. 
Because if you ever truly got saved, I ain't talking about joining the church. I ain't talking about getting baptized. I'm talking about was there ever a time in your life that you turned to him by faith, realizing he loves you, and Jesus came and died for you that he may wash your sins away. And he rose from the grave, and you come in faith in him, not in your good works, not determined from now on I'm living for you, but rather faith in him saying, my God, I give you my life. And as a result, I'm following you. And Jesus saves your soul. Now watch this. When we sin, if we say that, that we hadn't sinned, we're liars because we have. And we will tomorrow if we live that long. We will. So what do we do about it? He says in verse 9, if we confess our sins, here's a beautiful passage, boys and girls. You need to underline it. You need to color it, you know, make it yellow, underline it and, and circle the words. He says, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so he says, what we have to do to restore the, not the relationship, we're saved forever, but the fellowship, the way we restore that fellowship is we confess our sin to Jesus Christ. That word confess means, it literally means in the Greek text, it means to say the same thing about your sin that God says about your sin. It, it, it means that you look at what you did as the Holy Spirit convicts you and He tells you what you did wrong. You don't try to explain it away. Yeah, yeah, Lord, I know I did it, but I was born this way. A lot of people are using that lie right now. Truth of the matter is we're all born this way. We're all born sinners and we need to bring our sin under the mighty hand of God. We need to humble ourselves unto God that we might be forgiven of our sins. And so instead of saying, yeah, Lord, I did it, but I did it because this person done that, made me do this, and I knew it wasn't wrong, what right, but I had to do it. That's wrong. That's not confession. Confession is when you see what you did was evil before God with no excuse. And you turn to God and you say the same thing about your sin that God says. You don't try to whitewash it. You don't try to explain it away. You don't say, yeah, but. You simply say, yes, Lord, you're right. I'm wrong. I have sinned against you and I pray you'll forgive me of my sins. And he says, if we do that, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How wonderful is our Lord. Come on, y'all. God loves you, and he has sent his son to save you. If you've been saved, you don't have to worry about lo losing your salvation. But I'll tell you this one thing. You better be sure you are saved. If you're dependent on your good works to keep you saved, you're not saved. You're not saved. But if you're dependent on the blood of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection to keep you saved, you're saved. And whenever you sin, you didn't fall out of... Out of um, eternal life, you fell out of fellowship. And you can get it right back by turning back to God and say, God, I have sinned against you. Forgive me and, and cleanse me from my sin. And you know what he does? He forgives you and he cleanses you from your sin. How sweet is the gospel of Jesus? How rich is the love he gives us? Come on, y'all. Let's follow Jesus.